Hey guys, Hearth here again with another Hunter PvP commentary. This is a I'm playing a survival hunter on Eye of the Storm. This was a really long game, and because of that, I'm going to cut this into two videos. And in the commentaries, I'm going to talk about something that's you know sort of related between the two of them. In this one, I'm going to talk about some of the announced information when it comes to PvE in Patch 4.3. And in the second one, I'll be talking about class balance and things like that, as far as PvP goes. First, I just want to say that I'm cutting it in half because... Well, because if I didn't cut it in half, this would end up being, like, a few seconds short of 20 minutes in length. And... I just don't... I don't think that a 20 minute PvP video makes for like an entertaining video all the way through, no matter how good the commentary is. You know, if you're covering something specific, then fine, longer videos work. If you're doing a Let's Play, it works, but just, you know, PvP doesn't work as well. So I'm going to cut it into two and try that out. Uh, it also helped me with the upload times, but... We're going to ignore the gameplay, since I kind of have a limited amount of time to talk about this. Uh, today, or yesterday, some previews of the patch 4.3 dungeons were released by Blizzard. You know, as everyone knows, I plan on doing a lot of coverage of patch 4.3, so I found all this stuff really, really interesting. So I'm just going to go over, you know, the dungeons... Uh, some of the information about the bosses, and just general thoughts on them. Now, this is going to be a very PvE-oriented commentary, so keep that in mind. Uh, the first dungeon, there will be three dungeons released with patch 4.3. The first one is called End Time. End Time. E-N-D. End Time. Which involves, I believe, going to the Caverns of Time and, well, traveling forward in time and seeing what would happen if we don't defeat Deathwing. And this is a really interesting concept to me. The three, the bosses, it looks like, will be an echo of Sylvanas Windrunner. Um, I don't think I need to explain who Sylvanas is. Um, Tyrand, I don't really need to explain who Tyrand Whisperwind is either. I don't really need to explain who any of these people are looking at it. These are all very prominent lore figures. I haven't actually even looked this over properly. Uh, third boss, an echo of Jaina Proudmoore. And lastly, an echo of Bane Bloodhoof. So, we're going to be fighting future, potentially corrupted versions of very prominent lore figures. And, you know, figures that we all see in-game. That is really interesting. Also, I have to point out the really badass screenshot on MMO Champion of, like, Deathwing impaled on top of Wormrest Temple. Not sure what's going on there, but that's really, really cool. I mean, I'm assuming that has something to do with the whole old gods just using Deathwing because he's really, really powerful. And, you know, I mean, in the end, the the old gods are the winners here, not Deathwing. So, anything with the Caverns of Time, I'm really looking forward to it, I have to admit. Anything with the Caverns of Time, I'm looking forward to it. Which brings me to part two, dungeon number two. The Well of Eternity. This is the thing I've been looking forward to all, expect, all expansion. All expansion long, this is what I've been looking forward to. Something to do with the Well of Eternity. Blizzard promised it at BlizzCon, I believe. I've been looking forward to it ever since. First boss, or at least one of the bosses, uh, Parathorn, a Highborn, who was corrupted by Xavius. It's going to be interesting. Queen Ashara herself. I don't think I need to explain who she is. And then, the possibly the greatest idea ever, uh... Fighting against Manoroth and Varothin. Manoroth is, of course, the Pit Lord who used his blood to corrupt the entirety of the Orcish race. And Varothin is one of Queen Ashara's personal bodyguards. 
or just personal guard, rather. Bodyguard isn't exactly the right phrase to use. But... <laughs> Blizzard is just pulling me back in with these... I don't even have to know anything about the fights. I don't care how difficult they may be or what the fights even involve. Just the fact that we're going to be fighting Manoroth is enough to make me very, very interested. Moving on to the third dungeon, we have the Hour of Twilight, which is going to in take place in present-day Dragonblight, which is, according to Blizzard, now under a full invasion by the Twilight's Hammer. Players must escort Thrall and the Dragon Soul safely to Wormrez Temple, where the assault on Deathwing is to commence. So, the bosses for this, some kind of ele um, Ascended Water Elemental. We've seen plenty of those this expansion. Um, an Assassin, who has been tasked with assassinating Thrall, shockingly enough. And then lastly, Archbishop Benedictus. Yes. It's going to be very enjoyable to kill him, I have to say. Very, very enjoyable to kill him. So, that's all well and good, but I know what all of you are thinking. What about the raid? Well, you know, the raid... Interestingly enough, named Dragon Soul. Probably fittingly enough as well. Um, we Before we face, according to Blizzard, before you face Deathwing the Destroyer, you must prevail against six mighty bosses. Indeed. The most powerful elemental still under Deathwing's sway, Morchok. <laughs> that name amuses me. Uh, doesn't say what kind of elemental he is. One is assuming fire. Or Morchok is more of an earth. It's more of an earthy name, isn't it? Warlord Zanaz. I don't know who's in charge of coming up with the names for the old gods' minions, but they're doing a great job, let me tell you. Uh, actually, hold on. This is this is interesting. Countless ages ago, warlord, warlord even, warlord Zanaz and his soldiers waged endless war against the forces of Cthun and Yog Saron. So we've got a bit of, you know, fighting going on between the old gods, however long in the past, which is probably going to play itself up a lot in the next expansion, whatever it may be, because it says that Zanaz is still a loyal servant of Nizoth, the old god who is probably behind Deathwing's corruption. Uh, then we have Yorsage. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Yorsage the Unsleeping. He is some kind of faceless one or something. Hagara the Binder seems to be hmm. I haven't actually read this yet. She was one of the first students of arcane magic under the Forsaken. And she was corrupted by the Windlord Alakir. Interesting. I'm almost out of time. I need to hurry the hell up. Um So then we have Altraxian, a Blue dragon? Or, no, not a blue dragon. A twilight dragon, I believe. Yeah, twilight dragon. Ultraxion is the only twilight dragon Deathwing has praised. Interesting. The insidious Warmaster Blackhorn will be the next boss. And then, you know, lastly, we have... We have the fight against Deathwing. And assumingly, this fight is going to take up two, two full encounters, one of which we will be fighting actually on Deathwing's back, and the other one will take place in the Maelstrom. There was a really interesting quote by Ghostcrawler. You can find it on MMO Champion. I don't think I have time to find it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to run out of time before I can actually read through this and find it. Uh... Crashes into the maelstrom, emerges out of it again. It sounds really amazing. Like, you'll have to go find the quote on MMO Champion. It's under the uh, Patch 4.3 interview with Greg Street. 
parentheses ghost crawler. Part, I'll see you guys in part two of this commentary, which I'm going to go record now. Stay tuned.